This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is not the new Zorro, you know, the mark of Zorro <laughs> tablet PC. This is finally the HP ZBook X2. So I know you've been asking me to review this for like a year or so. And when it first came out, it was kind of expensive and it had Intel 7th generation CPUs just as the 8th generation shipping. I'm like, eh. So HP finally got it to us, and I'm very happy that they did. It's still certainly a specialty Windows tablet that is built like a burglar bash and this thing is a tank but now we have intel eighth generation quad core ultrabook cpus inside the same nvidia quadro m620 graphics a 4k hp dream color display which if you're not familiar with dream color displays that's a pro proper name for it because it's a really stunning display and even more exciting a wacom emr pen now this is really aimed at those of you who are artists probably professional given the price tag or designers, that sort of thing. And you really love that Wacom EMR experience, which I would still say is the best pen experience in the business. Anyway, it is expensive. Starts at like $2,500 for an Intel 7th gen model, which is adequate still for 2D kind of illustration work in Photoshop, uh, that sort of thing. And it goes up to about $3,400 for our Intel 8th generation model. Now this is pretty well appointed at least. You get that HP Dream Color 4K UHD display. You get 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig NVMe SSD. So it's not like you're slumming at least with the specs for that price. We're gonna look at it now. Of course, a Windows convertible like this isn't just for art and design. It's also great for business uses, like editing PDFs, for example. As speaking of that, I want to thank our sponsors, Wondershare and PDF Element Pro, which lets you annotate, create, edit PDF files. In fact, you can even do things like use the OCR function to scan in an image and then turn it into a Word document or a PDF document. It's $89.95 and it's an outright purchase. So if you're sick of the Adobe subscription model, for example, that's kind of nice too. It's available for Windows. And like I said, it makes sense for convertibles like this particularly, but it works on anything and is even a Mac version. So like I said, this is kind of a unique product, though there are some things that are close. When it was first announced, a lot of people thought, wow, a bigger, better Microsoft Surface Pro. Well, the Surface Pro 6 is considerably smaller. It's in the 12 inch class and it, you, you might think Surface Pro is expensive, but obviously it's a lot less expensive. There's no Nvidia Quadro graphics though with a Surface Pro and this one can go up to 32 gigs of RAM. This is bigger, heavier, tankier, but it does have a detachable keyboard like Surface Pro. We're going to talk more about that keyboard in a bit. Then there's Microsoft's own Surface Book 2 which is available in 13 and a half inch size and 15 inch size. Obviously this falls somewhere in between a little closer to the smaller one, but the surface is really more of a laptop replacement. It's really got that physical keyboard design that makes it feel like a laptop. You've got a different kind of consumer graphics card in that. That's the GTX 1050 inside of the Surface Book. So that one's great if you're more into playing games versus professional content creation. Though it can do. Obviously, you're going to get CUDA acceleration with the Surface Book. But sort of a different animal. The pen experience just doesn't compare. Which is true also of Surface Pro. And Trig pens that they use are okay, but not exactly pro level. I know some of you are going to argue about that. And a lot of you do make do with the pen. And depending on the kind of art that you do, it can work out well. But there is a difference in the level of experience in terms of pressure, in terms of tilt, in terms of per application customization for the pen, that sort of stuff. Then there's the Vio Z Canvas. For those of you who actually remember that one, this is pretty close to a spiritual successor, removable keyboard, relatively speaking, more powerful than the average tablet on the market. Yeah, almost there. And lastly, there's Wacom's own Mobile Studio Pro products, which have the form factor of a tablet. So they're not exactly laptop replacements. I know some of you who are going to school for art or design, whatever, and you were really thinking about that Mobile Studio Pro because you like that Wacom Pen experience, but it really isn't designed much like a laptop, is it? So the ZBook has that going for it. Now for the specs, you can see those on screen, but you've got Intel quad core Ultrabook 15 watt CPUs in here. Sorry, not enough room for 45 watt CPUs. That would have been interesting. That was something that the Vio Z Canvas tried to do in its day. You can go up to 32 gigs of RAM with this. You have a PCIe NVMe SSD, and technically this thing is serviceable. You can open it up to upgrade it, and HP has a service manual if you want to do that, but boy, it is not easy. It's on the complex side, but you could do it. That 4K dream color display these days seems to be, looking at HP's sale page, seems to be the standard that they're doing now. And that is a wide gamut display with almost 100% Adobe RGB coverage. It is a very nice matte glass 
etched glass display. So in, compared to the Mobile Studio Pro, it's got a little bit less grain. It's a little bit less matte than the Mobile Studio Pro. So it's really, they're pretty close in terms of that though. You have both a fingerprint scanner on here and a Windows Hello IR camera. You have plenty of ports. You've got HDMI 1.4, alas, not 2.0 for those of you who want to drive 4K displays at 60 hertz. You have a USB-A port. Yay! Maca Mobile Studio Pro has only USB-C ports, so that can be instantly annoying if you have legacy things to plug in. This has two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and yes, you can use it for charging, and yes, you can drive High resolution 4K displays using that, use Thunderbolt docks, it's full four lane PCIe, so it's good stuff there. The NVIDIA Quadro M620 card with two gigabytes of GDDR5 VRAM is your only graphics option, and it helps. That's a pretty low end Quadro card, which makes sense in this form factor. Waka Mobile Studio Pro starts with an M600, you can go up to an M1000 if you're going with the larger model, and it's enough to help with Adobe programs that really want you to have some kind of CUDA acceleration going on. Premiere Pro, for example, Adobe Animate, those sorts of things. It's not going to rock your world. It's not for playing games. It's not really the killer GPU. For those of you who are doing lots of Blender or ZBrush, a lot of 3D rendering, this is a bit more towards the 2D crowd, I would say, this product. One thing I really love about this thing, even though it is heavy, it adds weight. You can see just how heavy this thing is on screen right now, but the keyboard is detachable, but aha, right? With Surface Pro, you pull out that keyboard, it does you no good, right? So this one connects with your magnetic pogo pin connectors, but you can detach it and it uses Bluetooth. So this is perfect. Anybody who actually uses these products for art and design knows that often you want to use something this size in your lap and you want to have the keyboard off, the si off to the side for command keys and that sort of thing. So you, you can do that here and it even has a little a mini USB charging port if you tend to always use it separated from the tablet so that you have to charge it up. It is backlit. It's like the Surface Pro type cover but much more rigid. It even has a metal keyboard deck on it so none of that springy, springy, flexible kind of feeling for those of you who don't like that. It's a very nice keyboard to type on by the way too and the the trackpad on this is very good. I find the service a little too slick, a little too fast, but that's a pretty minor complaint and a matter of personal preference. When it comes to build quality, can I say the word tank enough times? This thing is so rigid. It, you, it has a very nice flip out kickstand. This is a metal body, by the way. The kickstand is pretty comfortable compared to a Surface Pro with that metal that can kind of dig into your legs. This one has a, a kind of flattened area, so it doesn't dig in quite as much. And it's fairly stiff. That is, you can, you can drop this down to just about any angle you can imagine. Uh, but if you have a heavy hand, eventually it will start sinking. But overall, it's pretty well done. And it's something we've seen HP do with a variety of X2s in one way or another, this sort of kickstand. This is the first one I think that HP ever did with the cutoff corners. We've looked at the HP Spectre X360 gem cut with the cutoff corners on it. Well, this one, it just looks good. There's no functional purpose. There are no ports on those cutoffs. In terms of performance, this is sort of like those super thin and light mobile workstations that a variety of companies make, HP, Lenovo, and all that sort of thing that aren't using 45 watt mobile workstation CPUs, they're using Ultrabook CPUs. So again, your mileage may vary. For 2D art, it is absolutely adequate if you get the quad core 8th gen, even the 7th gen. Honestly, if you're doing Photoshop and you're doing drawing and sketching or Illustrator and you're doing some design work, this is not, like I said, really meant for those of you who are heavy 3D rendering kind of people. You probably do want a CPU that's more powerful, even for a product that's meant to be used on the grow. In terms of heat and noise, uh, it's thick enough and the chassis is heavy enough that heat is dissipated well, which means there's no particular hot spot, but the whole back will get warm. Not hot, not burning hot, but say you're streaming video or you're working in Photoshop with many layers, it'll reach human body temperature, which means it'll feel warm to you, but it's not going to burn you. It does have two fans inside, one for the Quadro card and one for the CPU. Overall, it's pretty effective in terms of that. And the fan, it, I hardly ever hear it coming on, to be honest. So how about the pen? The pen looks a lot like the previous generation, Wacom Pro Pen 1. However, it is not compatible, the HP, with any of Wacom's Pro Pen or Pro Pen 2 pens. So it's Wacom EMR, but it's different enough that they won't work. So you're going to have to live with this pen, which isn't bad. It doesn't have much of a soft touch finish, but that could be a good thing because Wacom's soft touch finish pens tend to get sticky with age, kind of the rubber degrades or whatever it is. 
Um, it has an eraser at the end. It has only one button, and that's kind of a bummer. I like to have at least two buttons, one for Photoshop Undo, for example, another one for the Alt key, so I can keep sampling colors as I'm going along and painting. The weight is on the light side, but the shape of it is very pleasing. It's 4,096 pressure levels. Wacom's currently up to 8,192. I don't think that part is terribly important. It supports tilt just as well as any Wacom product does, which is to say pretty much universally supported. It's not like Entrig pens where you have to fight and fiddle and try to find a program that actually supports it well. This just gives you tilt, which is delightful and kind of important for those of you who are doing any kind of serious artwork with the pen. There's virtually no parallax with this, and that way it's a lot like Wacom products, and there's no air gap that I can see, so it's probably bonded glass. The good stuff there, and the display is just lovely to die for. Lovely color gamut. Could be brighter, though. 300 nits is okay. It's not stellar. It's not class-leading. Perhaps they were shooting for better battery life when they did that. The contrast ratio, you can see all the specs on screen, but the contrast ratio on this is decent almost a thousand to one, probably the etched matte glass surface is reducing contrast a little bit so it couldn't score even higher. Obviously the star here is the color gamut, which is very wide, and HP does a factory calibration. It was pretty good out of the box. A little too cool, the whites are a little towards the blue, but in general they did a pretty good job. The pen driver, if you look at it, is exactly just a dark themed version of Wacom's Cintiq and Mobile Studio Pro control panel, complete with pen settings for pressure curves and per app settings for what your button does, for how the pen behaves. That part is really nice because often we want it to do different things in different programs, so that's pretty well done. I've had no problems with running Windows 18.03 and 18.09 on this. It's just fine and compatible, and Wacom's drivers are all compatible at this point, too. It's great for Illustrator, that sort of thing, where sometimes you find like other pens that are still not as well supported in Illustrator. This is still the gold standard, so you've got excellent support there. This does have HP quick keys, which are basically express keys on each side, so lefty, righty, it's all good. So you can do things like make your brush bigger or smaller or zoom and all that sort of thing. And you have a touch screen for zooming as well, so that's nice to have those buttons. Battery life on this, 70 watt hour battery, which would be big for an Ultrabook, but mm, not so big for a mobile workstation, but this doesn't have quite the horsepower of a mobile workstation either. HP claims like 10 hours. I no, I've been getting about four and a half hours doing 2D work, productivity, streaming some video, you know, that sort of thing. If you're doing 3D work, it will be even shorter. None of these products so far, other than Surface Pro, which is really meant to be more of a mobile tablet for everyday use and not so much a purpose-built artist workstation kind of thing, none of these have fantastic battery life. It does support HP's quick charge and it comes with a 90 watt charger. So that's the HP ZBook X2 latest generation here at the beginning of 2019, and it is a unique piece. As I said, there are a lot of near competitors, but nothing quite like it in terms of the maximum RAM, in terms of the tanky build quality, the fact that it can be used like a laptop, much more so, say, than a Wacom Mobile Studio Pro. And the pen experience is superb. The only thing you're going to find that might be a little bit better is genuine Wacom products, but really it's so close, including the software control panel being the same. Oh, there you go. Obviously, this price tag, probably you're going to have work by it, or you're one of those clever bargain hunters out there. Like I said, you can find these sometimes on eBay or leftover sales for the Intel 7th generation for considerably less. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos, and thumbs up if you like this vid.